Okay, I think I can do this one in less than five minutes. <clears throat> I'm hoping. But uh, this past lecture, we were talking about, uh, I introduced a term called the Buildings Roman. Now, the Buildings Roman is a genre of novel. It's a developmental novel where a young person grows up, matures into a, a new identity or understanding of themselves. So, with James Joyce, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, what we're dealing with is Stephen Dedalus growing up into a adulthood or uh, becoming an artist is the goal. The extent to which he achieves that is up for grabs. We'll talk about irony in a coming lecture. But for now, I want to talk about the development of Stephen Dedalus in terms of plot lines. The Freytag Pyramid is sort of the standard image we use for uh, diagramming plot. We have the uh, introduction, a rising action, the climactic moment that leads to a resolution of sorts. Now, there's tension, right? And the, the rising action is basically pulling that rubber band of tension until it snaps at the climax. And with Joyce, he's so his novels are so tightly wound that uh, and measured that if you take the page number of, of his novels, divide it by two and open it up to that page, finding yourself in the very middle of his novel, uh, we see his protagonists at their, um, wow, it's snowing. Wow, it's snowing hard. Forgive me. <clears throat> um, at, at a moment of crisis, the climactic tension moment. In Stephen Dedalus's case, it's chapter three, where we are now, uh, during fa right after Father Arnell's lesson on hell. And he's really struggling with the condition of his immortal soul. He's feeling shame over visiting so many prostitutes in the red light district, uh, and he's having a bit of an identity crisis. This is a turning point for him. Now with Joyce, again, tightly wound, methodical, measured, he doesn't simply have an overarching macrocosmic Freytag plotline. He also has these miniature plot lines within each chapter, and they all sort of feed into one another. So for example, the rising action climax resolution of chapter one would probably be his need to fit in, his, um, his not understanding his surroundings, uh, building up to his confronting the rector when he was unjustly punished in class and getting a small victory and being celebrated by his peers finally at the end of the chapter at Klongawas. The resolution of a chapter becomes the source of conflict and tension in a consequent chapter. So he's, not, he's doing well at Klongawas, he has a name for himself, he was a hero, but his father loses money in chapter two, he's no longer at Klongawas, and he even finds that his, um, his dad and the teachers involved sort of laughed at his said this scene as if he were a child and it undercuts the significance of his heroic act in his mind. Chapter two, he wants to kiss CC, he doesn't. We find him struggling with that and um, ending up in the red light districts of Dublin. So keep, keep an eye on this sort of pattern. Uh, and then I also wanna talk about one more term, about a minute, uh, the motif, all right? A motif is a recurrent image. And there are six recurrent images that I mentioned in class that I'd like to point out so you can keep an eye on them. Maybe look back at the readings that you've had and um, see if you remember any of these images or keep, oh, and excuse me, keep an eye on, an eye out for these readings and the future readings. I'm repeating myself, the recurrent word. Anyway, the big images are a road, cow, water, woman, flower, and bird. And in the first two pages, when we see Baby Taku, the childlike perspective of Joyce, the almost infant-like perspective of Joyce, all those images are mentioned. We're given the key right at the outset. And we watch these images sort of recur throughout the novel. And each time the image is seen, it's in a different context. And uh, there's new, more nuance attached to the image. And it gives texture to the overall story. Now the plot line is very direct, and we can kind of pay attention and follow that along. That, the spark notes will give us plenty of plot. But the, the nuance, hearing the, the texture of, of, the, of the images, of the motif, is, is something you almost gotta, it happens almost unconsciously as you read. And um, it's, it's, one of, it's, it's something Joyce is really good at. Anyways, this novel, this analysis is coming mostly from William York Tyndall's Reader's Guide to James Joyce, as well as Sidney Bolt's Biography of Joyce. And if you'd like to take a look at any of those, uh, look at the cheat sheets, so to speak, um, I'd be happy to make copies or, or show you uh, the book or let you borrow it or something like this.
I'll see you in class.